Maybe this time I won't run out of storage. Watermelon sugar. Hey guys, so I finally finished watching One Tree Hill, which I have mentioned in the last like three videos, which are probably the only videos I have. Well, we finally finished it after about a month. I think it's been a month. Probably a month. So, today I am here to share all of my opinions that nobody asked for. And because I just, I just really need to discuss some things and I'm hoping maybe somebody out there who has seen the show will also want to elaborate on these thoughts with me because I love talking about the TV shows that I've seen and I know like three people that have seen this so yeah um before I get started though I don't feel right posting something right now on the internet and not including this I know my platform is very small and I probably won't reach many people saying this I need it needs to be said because silence is not going to be the answer to this. What happened in Minneapolis, it's flabbergasting that this is still going on. This has been going on for decades and the authorities are continuing to not do anything about it. It's just so blatantly obvious that it's only towards people of color and it's sickening. What year are we in? Hello. I'm going to link below petitions to sign, places to donate if you can donate and please, please don't be silent about this. Something needs to be done, and it's about freaking time. So now that I got that off my chest, let's talk about One Tree Hill. I'm just gonna start with some general things that I thought about the entire show. So to start that off, I'm going to go ahead and say it was kind of predictable. All the way through, I could predict what was going to happen next so easily. And one of my friends told me that whenever I first started watching the show. She was like, it's predictable and I will very much agree with that. I knew Dan was never going to die. I called that. Like the second they tried to make him die in like the first or second season, he was never going to die. They weren't going to do that. They were not going to kill off the most controversial character. And I know people that were watching this in real time didn't know how long the show was actually going to run. So it seems possible that he could have died in the second season, not knowing how long the show was actually going to go on. But watching this and knowing that there were nine seasons and I was only on like episode three of season two, he wasn't gonna die. Come on. Neither were any of the other main characters. Just knowing that there were nine seasons, they were not going to kill off Lucas in the middle of season one. No. I am also 10,000% convinced that there is a Scott family curse and I am so surprised that that was never like even joked about or brought up at any point like, oh haha, ha, there must be a curse or something. Or at least in my memory it wasn't. But it's just like, how could it not be? Not that this has anything to do with like predictability or anything, but I would love to see a spit off with like the Baker kids and Jamie and his friends in high school. I would just love to see that. Chuck and Madison and Jamie in high school, especially since they hinted towards that like love triangle when they were so little. I would love to see that play out as them in high school. Just saying. So the next overall thing that I really love about One Tree Hill is just how it was kind of like a little time capsule for the 2000s, or at least like the earlier seasons were. Something that I picked up on was that most, if not all of the episode titles in the first couple of seasons were all names of songs. But not even just the music, like the fashion altogether. Like if somebody asks me what it was like in the 2000s, I'm gonna show them One Tree Hill. Like just the low rise jeans, and the t-shirts over long sleeve t-shirts and just what were we what were we thinking uh yeah great time capsule for the 2000s so the way that they mess with time and were not consistent said they tried to keep it modern day but then they'd like jump around in time and they wouldn't be consistent about it. Jamie's birthday and Jamie's age is such a big contender for this one. Jamie was popped out of the womb in June because that was right after graduation. She literally went into labor as she was giving a valedictorian speech. So I think it's pretty easy to assume that he was very clearly born in June. But every other time after that when they would show his birthday, it was definitely not June. One of his birthday parties took place in the middle of the high school basketball season and if you know anything about American high school sports, you know that June is not when high school basketball takes place. Now there, there were like a couple other birthdays that were just very evidently not in June. And I think it's funny how they addressed it. It was very, I guess, a stereotypical way to address it. I think he was a trick with Nathan. How old are you, Jamie? 24, right, Jamie? Yep. I was 23, but I had a birthday. Uh-huh. And uh, when was his birthday? 
But also with that, if I'm remembering correctly, and I'm pretty sure I am, season four starts four years in the future. And I think it was season six when Nathan played Slam Ball, and they said that they were the 2008 Slam Ball champions. No, they just really did a lot of time twisting. But while I'm on the topic of time twisting, because I came to this epiphany the other day and I made a TikTok about it and nobody watched it or liked it. Hi, I just finished One Tree Hill and I came to this epiphany, so here it is. So as we all know, the gang graduated in 2006, and as Haley was giving her valedictorian speech, Jamie literally popped out of her, making Jamie born June 2006. Remember that. Season 4 then starts four years in the future, hypothetically making it 2010, in which Jamie is now four years old. Fast forward all the way to the end of season 9, Haley says that it's Trick's 10 year anniversary, and I can't remember which year exactly Trick was made, but it was either 2005 or 2006, making it now 2015 or 2016, and Jamie is almost 10 years old. And then, in the last few minutes of season 9, they're at one of Jamie's high school basketball games, where he's either 16 or 17. So when the math is done, the ending of the show takes place in either 2022 or 2023. What's crazy is that if this was real life, it'd still be going on. And that these characters would be living through the coronavirus. And y'all know Chris Keller definitely would have contracted coronavirus. Like if this show were taking place in real life and there was like a timeline, like they'd still be living through this entire story. Their story wouldn't even be over yet in real life. Tell me that's not absolutely crazy. All right, so now I'm going to get into my character thoughts. So I'm just gonna get this one out of the way. Dan Scott. There are so many things to say about this guy. So many. Through the entire nine seasons of his existence, I don't know where to begin or how to even sum it up. I'm going to start with confliction. Like he was just so awful all those years and it just felt like he was just so fake. And he really just r tried to ruin everyone's life the most he possibly could. But then in the end, he like comes back and he's like, oh, I wanna have a family. Like you gotta give him credit, he did save Nathan. He basically saved the show, even though the show was ending. But yeah, like I said, I hated him for a really long time. <sighs> You know, he, you know, he had his comedic moments. I'll give him that. He had his good, funny, wholehearted moments. Like there was this one episode, him and Deb were arguing over something. You going for a swim? Nothing gets by you, Dan. The water's warm. You're in for a treat. Well, you know what? Dan did have his comedic moments, but most of the time he was awful. He had a good effort for redemption. It felt very put on at first. I just feel like he actually didn't try to change until he was in the diner, isolated, and had no family, and he really realized how much it meant to him. So, yeah, moral of the story is that Dan Scott is a bad bit, and you can't kill him. Yeah, I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. And even though he was the reason that I wanted to throw my TV out of a window 90% of the time, I guess he kind of pulled through in the end, so he's like kind of okay. Speaking of the Scott jeans and the Scott boys, we are bringing up one of my absolute favorites, Nathan Scott. I'm gonna be real upfront, real honest here. I hated Nathan at the beginning. I just didn't like him. Like I just knew people like him in real life and I just couldn't like him. And I feel like it was designed that way. Like at least the first few episodes, they wanted you to hate Nathan and love Lucas. And uh, shocker, I am absolutely in love with Nathan Scott now. All of my dating standards have been heightened because of Nathan Scott and um, I'm going to be severely disappointed in life, I'm aware. So while I'm not going to say that Nathan had the most character development throughout the entire show, he made huge strides. The way the writers turned him around, I didn't think it was gonna be possible for me to like Nathan after watching those first few episodes, but they just worked their magic. They just, the writers really just did him dirty. I don't know how else to put it. Obviously he became the man he was because of the things that he ended up going through. But still, all I can really say about Nathan is that he deserved better, and I love him. So. So the next up on our list of the Scott boys, we have Lucas Scott. People are not going to like what I have to say next. I think Lucas Scott was the Tory Vega of One Tree Hill. And here's why. They started out the show wanting you to think that Lucas was this amazing, soft, wholesome mama's boy. Like respect for women, like that whole thing. 
and that you wanted to hate Nathan. Like at first, I definitely like saw that why they were trying to make him this like great guy that everybody loved at first, but he was so influenced by the people around him. It was always, Lucas was like, Peyton, Peyton, Peyton. And then as soon as Brooke just kind of like slithered in there a little bit, he changed lanes. And if that doesn't tell you enough about Lucas, I don't know what does. Like, yeah, he was a great friend and he had these really good connections that only certain people can have with other people, but it was just, it got tiring. I hated every second of it. I didn't immediately recognize, like, Loki kind of toxic. At first, like, I just kept wanting to make excuses for his character. And that was just, like, a waste of time. And honestly, that's really it that I can say about Lucas. Is that, like, the writers wanted you to think that he was this great guy, great friend that you wanted to have. But, like, I just never really saw it. So, next up to the ladies, the strong, wonderful ladies who brought us Nathan and Lucas, we have Karen and Deb. First of all, the only valid Karen I've ever seen in my life. They are just two strong, independent businesswomen who just were always there for each other. And they also put up with Dan Scott's poo all those years and I just don't understand how they did. <laughs> the fact that Deb tried lighting Dan's dealership on fire with like some spiked alcohol, that is very much adequate. So yeah, not the hero we asked for, but the hero that we got. The fact, also the fact they like went into business together with Trick and with Karen's Cafe. There's the way that they stuck with each other through thick and thin. You, you love to see it. I just loved seeing their relationship blossom. And while we're on the topic of strong female leads, so I will say that a couple of characters are my favorite, but they're on like different scales of favorite. So one of my consistent, like beginning to end favorite characters, Haley James Scott. I just kind of feel like Haley's the perfect character, which I realize is a very heavy way to describe it. And there's like so many different ways to describe like the perfect character. It's not that she never had like any ups and downs. Clearly she had a ton. It's more or less just like, she just had this genuineness to her that you just didn't get with the other characters. Not that the other characters weren't genuine, but it was just like, Haley was one of those characters that needed to be played by a specific person. If Bethany Joy Lenz didn't play Haley, she would not have been the same character that we ended up having in the end. Plain and simply put, Haley was who she was because of the actress behind her. It's not that the character wouldn't have been good, it's the entire show wouldn't have been nearly as good if Haley wasn't played by Bethany Joy Lenz, you know what I mean? She was definitely the mom of the group, I don't think anybody can deny that in any capacity. I definitely feel like if Haley was a person in real life, her and I would be best friends. I loved Haley, everything about Haley. Uh, the only time I really didn't like her was when she went on tour and that's it. Like the first time with Chris and it was a jumpster fire, you know? So next on our list of strong female leads, we have Peyton Sawyer, who at the start of the show, after the whole her and Nathan thing was over, I just really liked Peyton. I don't really know what it is besides like her independence, I guess. When you take it into consideration, all of the characters very evidently had a lot of independence, had the most independence, and just the way she carried her independence, I don't really, I can't find the right words to describe it. Peyton didn't end up being my favorite in the end, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's more or less just like, there were other characters that I ended up loving more than I loved Peyton initially. Just the ambition she had for making a life for herself. She basically started Trick. She went to Karen and she was like, hey, I have a business idea. And then her and Deb and Karen literally helped her build this business that she had in mind pretty much the brains behind it. And then she went and did that internship in LA, stayed there for a while. And when she didn't want to compromise herself or her morals to fit into the LA music industry standards, she went back home and started her own record company, which was the Red Bedroom Records, which ended up being a huge force to be reckoned with. It was pretty self-sustainable and she had so much ambition and it was just really cool to watch. I will also say she had good taste in music. Also one of my reasons she was my favorite at first. However, the one thing that I didn't really understand about Peyton was the whole webcam thing. That just seemed really weird to me. Was that just a thing a lot of kids did in the 2000s? Was just like, just like have webcams on them 24 seven? All right, so on to the best character of all of One Tree Hill. This might be controversial, probably not. 
Brooke Davis, a true icon. She is the best character on One Tree Hill and you can't tell me otherwise. When you look up character development in a dictionary, you get Brooke Davis. I could pull up facts and reasons why, but all I can say is just watch her from the first episode to the last episode. She becomes a completely different person. She just becomes so much more in tune with herself and she just really learns to grow from all of that. Even with going to New York and having all this fame and success, she never changed. She stayed humble. She remembered where she came from. She's also very determined to be everything that her parents weren't. Whenever I first started watching her, I just wasn't really sure if I was going to end up liking her by the end and I ended up loving her by like the second season. There was even just within like the one season, there was so much character growth in there. You can't deny it. All right, now we're gonna talk about the one, the only, Jamie Scott. He was a cute little dude. You couldn't not like him. I don't think there's a single person on the face of the earth who doesn't like Jamie Scott. The way they wrote him, 10 out of 10. He is definitely a confident mix of Haley and Nathan's personality all the way through. So I will say it's kind of weird how they had that whole baseball thing go on with Jamie. And it was like, oh yeah, he loves baseball. And then he was really good at baseball. And then all of a sudden he's like, I want to break that scoring record. And it was just a total 180 back to basketball. And it was like, but what did, what was that? What was all the baseball stuff for then? Like, hello? <laughs> did we just forget that that ever happened? It was just like, what were the last two seasons for? Hello? So now the other character who I will say was also one of the best characters in One Tree Hill mouth mcfadden no bad vibes ever not a single one came from him he was always a great friend like the way that he risked his entire career just to help out nathan come on i also just loved his friendship with brooke especially because it was just one of those very unconventional friendship the way that they bonded and got along and i'm not gonna lie i rooted for them for a while it's like i was holding out hope that mouth and brooke would end up together i was kind of hoping but then Millie came along and I just knew that wasn't happening anymore. Speaking of Millie, I loved him and Millie together. I'm just gonna kinda like talk about both of them at the same time basically. I loved Mouth and Millie. The second that they met, I knew that they were gonna end up together. Yeah, but also with Millie, like, I didn't hate her. She was a good character, I liked her. I hated her friendship with Alex. I hated it. It was not cute, it wasn't good. I hate to say it, but Alex is the reason that Millie did cocaine. First of all, the whole making Millie a, a model for Clothes Over Bros never really went anywhere. Like, they would like bring it up. They never really showed her in action being a model for Clothes Over Bros. So it was kind of like, why? It almost felt like they were trying to be so extreme with the whole like Alex basically fat shaming Millie for being a plus size model. And then like, and then that just like somehow led to her doing cocaine. Look, it still confuses me. So next we're gonna talk about Skills. I love Skills. The comedic relief in every single scene. He was a cheerleader for his friends while also being very self-sufficient and working for his own career and just being a hard worker, basically for everything. But I didn't like that he l quite literally dated Nathan's mom. I didn't vibe with that at all. So next, I'm going to bring up Clay and Quinn. I'm not gonna bother doing them individually because I don't have much to say about either of them. I can't say that I loved these characters. They were replacements for Peyton and Lucas and it definitely felt that way. Clay had his own slew of issues that could have been his very own show. They were a good couple, I guess I'll say that, but I can't say I was into their story as, as much as I was into other people's relationship stories. Speaking of relationships, we are now going to be talking about Julian Baker. I always forgot that Julian was introduced to us because he dated Peyton. Really, that's also mostly because I just loved him and Brooke together so much that it's just weird to me that he was also with Peyton. And you know, besides Mouth, I couldn't really see Brooke dating any of the other characters that were on the show, so I'm kind of glad they brought Julian on. He was a cool dude. I liked him. I liked his work ethic. I liked how passionate he was about his work. While we're talking about Julian, we are also going to talk about Alex Dupre. I didn't like her, plain and simple. I don't think there was a point in time where I even liked her for the slightest bit. I just didn't like her. Did she have character development? Yes. I guess I liked how she definitely discovered herself more towards the end of the show, but the way she did chase dirty like that, he deserved better. I also feel like they tried to make Alex too much like Brooke. Like they were trying to make some sort of parallel and it didn't come across the way they wanted it to. 
oh, she just drove me insane. She is like so many people that I knew in high school and it just, no thank you, sir. So next we're gonna talk about a character that just like wasn't really on the show that much, but she was, um, Rachel Gatina. I also hated Rachel and there was probably never a point that I actually liked her. I think she changed Brooke for the worst in high school. Brooke was obviously looking for someone to cling to since she was not on speaking terms with Peyton and she found Rachel and just that just wasn't, that wasn't it. That wasn't cute. I didn't understand the whole thing with her and Mal and just the way that she played him like a freaking harp. Bro. And it just felt like Rachel always said that she wanted to change, but never actually made the effort to change. Am I the only one that saw that? She very clearly didn't want to change, but she kept saying she wanted to. And that is basically all of the thoughts that I can try to jam into this video right now. Yeah, that series was hella long and there were so many characters. Oh God, I didn't even bring up Victoria but I don't feel like I need to. I feel like we all know how we feel about Victoria. That's it. Thanks for sticking through if you are still sticking through and watching this. Thanks. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, please sign the petition in the down bar below. Donate if you can. It's really important. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in my next video.